or the reason that we are here at E2E has really been to arm the community with objective information. We, we've not been here to proactively sell to anyone. We've been here to give people the information to make their own informed decisions around flash and virtualization. Okay? So over the last two days, we've done a couple of talks. And what we've really been focusing on is the following. When you're using Whiptail, and when you're using it in association with virtualization, our aim very strongly being to convince you of these, these five things. So one is user experience. When you're using Whiptail with virtualization, your user experience is fantastic. Okay, the performance that we offer for the price point allows you to deploy this technology in um, hosted VDI solutions or in on-premise VDI solutions or even with other forms of virtualization. Okay? At the same time, if you look at our technology, small is dust here. If you <laughs> if you look at our technology, um, we, we create savings across the board. So if you're looking at um, space, from a space perspective, we shrink what you can do with this to what you can do with Whiptail down from 30 to 1. Okay? Performance increases, we can increase uh, performance 30 fold as well. Okay? So what you can do with 1500 disks across 3 or 4 racks you can do with two rack units of Whiptail and for a fraction of the cost. So we're really focused on delivering increased user performance, sorry, increased user experience through our performance at a much lower cost. In VDI versus this, we will see an 80% saving. So another thing is we work with Citrix, VMware, Cisco, Microsoft. In a, in a large number of deals. With Citrix, we're running in their labs. So when they show customers their VDI solutions, it's based on Whiptail. The same with Cisco. Okay, we're in their labs and they're advocating that. VMware, when they're building their new labs in the coming months, will also be the same. So these companies are demonstrating their technology to their most important customers using our technology. Okay? So, one of the reasons Microsoft likes, likes us is once you get through the storage costs, the, the Microsoft licenses are one of the largest costs around you know, many of these, these uh, projects. Companies like Cisco and Microsoft like us because we remove so much cost from storage from an overall VDI project that we lower the pressure on their discounts. So for the whole ecosystem around VDI from a vendor perspective, we're very beneficial because we are able to improve the margins whilst relieving the discount pressure. And for yourselves as a community, understanding the Whiptail message allows you to be a trusted advisor with your customers, bringing this innovation into the marketplace. So, this is very, very, um, a very quick slide on why, um, why we really need to exist as a, as a company. If you look at what's happened in terms of innovation in the marketplace over the last 12 to 15 years, networks, they double every 18 months in speed. So they ratified the one, gigabyte, one gigabit standard in 1999. In 2014, it's 400 gigabits. <laughs> um, in terms of hard drive capacity and processors, they've gone with Moore's Law. So 256 increase over those 12 to 15 years. And yet, hard drive speed is still the same as it was 12 years ago. The reason is, if they make hard drive speed spin any quicker, it breaks the sound barrier. Okay? So you get mini sonic booms. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Yeah, mini, mini sonic booms on the platter. That means you can't make hard drive spin any quicker. You can put them in a vacuum. You can put them in a vacuum. And great to see what happens if that. I mean, I they've tried stuffing them with helium now. That's the latest trick. If we stuff it with helium, uh, we can keep it cool enough so it won't melt the header. Yeah. And we can try and spin it faster. 
but I really wouldn't want to be on the other end of trying to open that drive. So or change it. When you're doing VDI, you need a huge number of drives. Okay, a drive does about 180 to 200 IOPS in a in a perfect world, and a user needs about 40 IOPS. Okay, so that's five to one. So the amount of hard hard drives you need in order to fulfil any decent sized VDI project is vast. The reason for all of this is not the capacity, obviously, it's the performance. And what our message is really saying is use EMC, NetApp, HP, HDS, all those fantastic capacity products for capacity. Where you need performance, use Whiptail. So we've been brought into deals by NetApp, by EMC, where they're getting hit over the head by the CIO saying we need more performance. They can't give it to them. So they bring us in to just stop the, um, you know, improve the customer satisfaction. They put the 5% of performance workloads on Whiptail and they deploy the rest on the capacity arrays from that, their own company. Now Whiptail's secret source lies in how we manage NAND Flash. If you take NAND Flash and you buy it from one of the vendors and you shove it in a server, you're going to kill the Flash in six to nine months with any kind of decent workload. You're also not going to get very fast I.O. If you take our 2RU box and you don't include our software on it, okay, you'll kill it in six to nine months. You'll get 30,000 I.O. from that, okay, maybe 15 to 20,000 right I.O. If you add our software on, you get 250,000 right I.O. sustained. 200,000 read I.O. and we warranty the drives for seven and a half years. Okay? The earliest we see any of our units failing in the field is after 19 years from now. Okay? Now we've run some technical sessions over the last two days on how we do that, so I'm not going to go into it, but our entire value chain really is around how we manage these three things. Okay? So our high cost, we manage it by improving the way the characteristics work for writes. Okay, so you don't have to over provision flash in order to get high write speeds. We also use MLC flash technology, which every one of you has in your pockets. You have a smartphone, you have a Samsung Galaxy S3, you have an iPhone, you've got the tablets in front of you. That's MLC flash, it's the stuff that we use. Now we're able to get huge performance out of MLC flash technology. Other people in the marketplace who do not have software, who do not manage Flash, they have to use additional hardware and also a different type of hardware. SLC Flash, which is three to five times more expensive and still has the same properties we have here. Okay? So we use a lower cost medium and we use our software to bring the most out of it. And that allows us to solve the three things on the right hand side. And yet, we still benefit from a small footprint. 2RU for 250,000 IO. So you could do maybe 5,000 VDI users in 4RU of storage. Low power, we do 180 watts per appliance. Durability, um, these things are very resistant to temperature, to moving around. We've been talking to a number of military organizations who want to move data physically from one location to another. If they do it with disk, they see damage, whereas if they use flash, it's a much more durable medium. Um, generally speaking, on the latency front, we're about 150 to 200 microseconds. Um, so th this is my last slide. Um, it really sums up the value of our business on one slide. We're all about improving the write speed. We're all about improving the durability, sorry, the endurance. Um, and we're all about delivering this at a low cost point. We're a multi-protocol flash array, so we will deliver this over fiber channel, ethernet, and InfiniBand. Okay, and all the different sorts of protocols from NSF, NFS that you'd expect we support. We've got 250 customers in the field, and last month we, we delivered product to support 70,000 VDI users. So last month alone, 70,000 VDI users. We've got customers from schools and colleges because we have a small appliance, all the way up to Google and many of the large engineering firms 
who have um, highly available solutions based on our technology and they have very high requirements. Um, low latency environments like gaming, they're also big fans of our technology. So we really have a very wide applicability for the customers that you're looking after. Um, oh yeah, my last point really is because we use software to manage the drives, we're able to build our technology on commodity hardware. So QLogic cards, Intel chips, Micron drives, LSI controllers. Okay? Yes. What do you mean by gaming? I need to, uh, can you... So get gaming, um, when, you're, when you're on the website and you're, for instance, um, we've got two, two reasons that we work with gaming. If we're on a website and they want to throw live odds at you, they need to be able to um, make a, a huge number of uh, decisions about you in a very short uh, space of time. And secondly, if you're talking about online gaming, I don't know if any of you play poker, but the support, pe the support teams who are watching poker have maybe six to eight different games going at any one point, and they're all running that in the VDI environment. So their IO numbers, their IO numbers are through the roof. So get 40 IO, you're talking hundreds. Okay? And they love us because they're able to... So they're playing poker in the VDI environment? No, they're... They're monitoring the they're games. They're monitoring so the, the games. Okay. The moderators, the admins, that kind of thing, are moderating, moderating the line games, looking, so things like the fraud teams, looking for people cheating, that kind of thing. They'll have six to eight <coughs> games going on at any one time in front of them that they're watching. And they need to, again, they need massive performance to keep up with it in real time, to pitch it that. And also things like we're starting to see some interest from the online actual th people like MMORPG providers, yeah. where you've got to run all these users on a server. They all want better graphics, better gameplay, better interactions, better performance, less lag, less latency. All those things, we're starting to see interest from those guys just to give them um, that performance. And again, it's about the footprint for them. Mm. They can stuff data centers full of this, but then they've got to power and call them. Yeah. It's not going to be easy to do that. Stuff it full of whiptail, you're going to reduce the space probably by, I don't know, maybe a rack per whiptail. It's any, it's any situation, because it works in trading as well, it's any yeah. situation where you have a lot of external users interacting with a small database or some small point of, mm -hmm. of you know, some small point of convergence where you have a lot of users in that small place, that can create a lot of I.O. and that's where we fit very well. So this is my last slide, I, we've spoken about it. Are there any questions that we can answer in the next minute or two? Yeah. What kind of uh, redundancy is uh, so, so we've got fully HA solution, we've got a two-year appliance, and then what we have is a, effectively a clustered solution where we have a number of our two IU appliances, which are connected to two storage routers at the top, and the back plane is connected via InfiniBank. Okay. That has a multi-controller multi architecture which allows us to operate in an NHA scenario. It's also worth saying that the M, uh, MBTF, or SSD drives, is about six times better than disk. So in terms of you know failures and all that sort of thing, we're in a much better place than you would traditionally be with disk. Um, anyway. And in the appliance, so in the single controller unit, redundancy is provided through the components, mm. um, as you'd expect from any appliance. Uh, but you, you bring on a good point. So if it's in your data center and you bought Whiptail, how easy is it to manage? How easy is it to repair? So if the drive fails, we've got hot swappable drives in there anyway, so you'll get the rebuild. You take the front bezel off, and you've got 24 drives in front of you. Okay, very easy to access. If you have a drive failure, you just simply take the one which we the spare that we ship with you anyway. You can take that out of its, of its packaging, take the drive out of the um, of the Whiptail box, and you put put it in. It will rebuild within 20 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, in terms of the connectivity, connectivity is in the back, the power is in the back, the drives are in the front. So if you need to service one of our chassis, you can leave it in the rack. You don't have to. You know, some some other hardware-based vendors. You have to pull the whole thing out of the rack, get your screwdriver out, lift the top off, and start messing around, which is, you know, quite risky. Yes? Do you have uh, two controllers in each box, or is it one? So in our appliance, I think us, uh, in our 2U two, two box, we have a single controller. When you cluster them together in, in what we call our Invictus solution, then you have a multi-protocol, uh, a multi-controller architecture. Um, so, any, any more questions? Or?
what, what can you talk just a small bit about the new software update you did on the DDG? Um, that was well, the software update wasn't about data DG. Was it? No, it was about replication. Oh, sorry. Um, so 4.1.1 was released as an architecture. It now allows you um, to do replication. But replication from Wiptail to anything. So if I want to set up an NFS share on a serial ATA, bunch of disks in my off-site location because I just want to store it, I don't want to replicate it, it's not an active workload, then I can do that. If I want to replicate it to another Wiptail device, yeah, that's fine, we can do that for ages anyway. Uh, if I want to replicate it over to a SaaS device, if I want to replicate it to a hosted center up into the cloud, and I'm going to duck the volume of missiles that I'm sure I'm going to get for mentioning the cloud. Um, if you want to do that, you can. It's very, very easy to do, and uh, comes as part of the software package. DGEEP's an interesting one, but we'll take that offline. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of protocols are you supporting? Yes. Fiber channel, yes. FCOE, yep. uh, IceCASI, NFS, right? Yeah. Not, kind of Not FCOE yet. FCOE yet? No. FCOE, FCOE is something which is, because we're using standard components and everything else like that, it's something that we could do. We've, we've got a third of our business is developers, so we, we've got a third of our company focusing on the roadmap, focusing on development. At the moment, we're not seeing enough demand from the field to go and add FCOE. But in terms of the technical challenge, not very difficult. So when we act, I, I was working at Cisco until eight weeks ago, so I know very well that people are architecting for FCOE, but they're still running 10 gig and they're still running fiber channel, okay? So people are kind of hedging their bets. When we actually see people making that shift to, to you know, DCB, um, then that's, it, you know, it's, it's not very difficult. There's a, I mean, the, 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 there's a lot more, there's other things that we want to develop that will make, will help us sell our product far more than FCOE, I would say, at the moment. There's yeah. lots of functionality that we could add in that, that customers are asking for. So, you know, I think, I think one of the key points is one third of our company is focused on R&D, okay? We've got a huge amount of funding which is driving that R&D process. So if you're wondering about, you know, we've heard various different words that you've thrown out. If you're wondering about where we're taking this technology and there's a technology that you think may be of interest to you and you want to ask us some questions, we'll very happily discuss that on a one-on-one -on -one basis under NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Sign this paper. Yeah. Um, okay. The NDA is also a PO, by the way, just so you all know. What is PO? Push order. order. He's joking. <laughs> no one told you that, right? <laughs> okay. Yes, they are. I've written. Oh, thank you. Connect.